Hey, what's up you guys? You are watching the Kaggle Code Review Show and my name is Ilarion Garbus. Today I want to do with you the Titanic Machine Learning from Disaster Kaggle Competition. Let's do it! And the author of this kernel is Alexis Cook. It's the head of Kaggle Learn at Kaggle. Thanks, Alexis. As usual, we would use the Google Colab for the Titanic tutorial. Let's start uh, with the first part. So logging into Kaggle for the first time can be daunting and the competition often uh, have public leaderboards, involve complex data. Nevertheless, all data scientists can rapidly learn from machine learning competitions and meaningfully contribute to the community. To give you a clear understanding of how the Kaggle platform works and the mental model of the type of learning you could do on Kaggle, uh, Kaggle team created a getting started tutorial for the Titanic competition. It walks you through the initial steps required to get your first decent submission on the leaderboard. And by the end of this short tutorial, you also have a solid understanding of how to use Kaggle's online uh, environment. So let's start. So if this is your first time ent entering a Kaggle competition, regardless of whether you have experience with a uh, handling large data sets, haven't done much coding, are newer to data science or are relatively experienced, you're in the right place. So the part one, get started. In this uh, section, you learn more about the competition and make uh, your first submission. So first of all, you need to join the competition to take data and the first thing to do is to uh, join it, okay? So you need to push the button join on the competition page. Uh, the uh, competition is simple. We want uh, you to use the Titanic passenger data. It's a name, age, price of uh, ticket um, and other data to try to predict who will survive and who will die. So take a look at the competition data click on the data tab uh, at the top of the competition uh, page and then scroll down to find the list of files. So here it how it looks like, okay? So you'll find uh, three files in the data. It's a train CSV, test CSV, and gender submission. Train CSV contains the details of a subset of the passenger on board. It's uh, 891 passengers to be exact where each passenger gets a different role in the table. To investigate this data, click on the name of the file under the data sources column. Once you've done this, all of the column names are listed to the right of the screen under the columns heading. Okay. You can view all of the data in the same window. The values in the second column can be used to determine uh, whether each passenger survived or not. For instance, uh, so the label would be one if the passenger is, uh, survived and zero if uh, the passenger died. For instance, uh, the first passenger listed in train CSV is Mr. Owen Harris Broad. He was 22 years old when he died on the Titanic. The second uh, data set is a test CSV and using the patterns you find in train CSV, you have uh, to predict whether the other 418 passengers on board survived. Click on test CSV to examine uh, its contents. Note that test uh, CSV doesn't have survive columns. This information is hidden from you and how well you do at predicting these hidden values will determine how highly you score in the competition. Those uh, uh, survived is a label column and you need to predict it. And the third file is a gender submission CSV. Uh, the gender submission CSV uh, file is provided as an example that shows how you should structure your predictions. It predicts that all female passengers survived and all male passengers died. Your uh, hypothesis regarding uh, survival will probably be different, uh, which will lead to a different submission file. But just like this file, your submissions should have passenger ID from the test CSV and survived uh, column that you will create with one for the rows where you think the passenger survived and zero where you predict that the passenger died. 
As a benchmark, you'll download the gender submission uh, CSV file and submit it to the competition. Begin by clicking on the download link to the uh, right of the name of the file. You can see it on the screen. This downloads the file to your computer, then you can submit predictions and upload the submission file. So let's do uh, the part two, your, uh, explore your coding environment. We will do it uh, in the Google Club instead of the Kaggle notebook. So uh, we will uh, so uh, we'll start to import uh, the libraries. We'll uh, import NumPy as NP uh, for the linear algebra and import pandas as pd for the data processing and uh, csv file input and output and uh, as we are using the uh, google club environment we uh, need to upload uh, the data from the kaggle to google club so the kaggle uh, got its own api we can upload uh, kaggle json file from our from the Kaggle uh, website and use the uh, API uh, to see the competitions list and we can see the uh, name of our competition is the Titanic and then we can easily with uh, one line of code download the Titanic data it would uh, we would use the content uh, path from the Google Collab and we can read CSV from the path that we uh, downloaded the data from the Kaggle. Okay, so the train data, we would use pandas to read CSV from the uh, content path, and uh, we would use train CSV for that. So that's how our data looks like. So we've got passenger ID, survived, passenger class, name, sex, age, CBSP, parch, ticket, fare, cabin, and uh, Embark. It's a port of uh, port of embarkation. Your code should return the output above, which corresponds to the first five rows. So we are using uh, the head train date data head for this, and it's very important that you see this output in your notebook uh, before proceeding with the tutorial. So you need to uh, see how the date looks like to proceed the uh, this tutorial. And the same we can do for the test data. We can read CSV from the test CSV. And uh, you can see that uh, you've got the same data, but you don't have a uh, survived uh, column. So you don't have the label. As before, uh, make sure that you see the output uh, for the test data above in your notebook uh, before continuing. Once all of the code runs successfully, all of the data uh, in train CSV and test CSV is loaded uh, in uh, the Google Collab, in the notebook you are using, we can uh, proceed to the part three. So uh, in the part three, we'll uh, improve our score and remember our goal. Uh, we want to find patterns in train CSV that help us predict whether the passenger in test CSV survived. It might initially feel overwhelming to look for patterns when there is so much data uh, to sort through. So we'll start simple. So first of all, we will explore a pattern. Uh, remember that the sample submission file in uh, gem uh, gender submission assumes that all female passengers survived and all male passengers died. In, is this a reasonable first guess? We uh, will check if this pattern holds true in the data. So with this code, we'll uh, look how um, many uh, women passengers survived and uh, we see that nearly 75% of women are survived. And before moving on, make sure that your code returns the output above. The code above calculates the percentage of female passengers who survived. Uh, then run the code below in another code cell and you'll see that nearly 19% of men are survived in the train data set. And the code above calculates the, passenger of, uh, the percentage of male passengers who survived. From this, you can see that almost uh, 75 of the women on uh, board survived, whereas only 19 of the men lived uh, to tell about it. Since again, this seems to be such a strong indicator of survival, the submission file in 
again, the submission CSV is not a bad first guess, and it makes sense that it uh, performed, uh, performed reasonably well. But at the end of the day, this is again the based submission basis its prediction on only a single column, on a single feature. As you can imagine, by considering multiple columns, we can discover more complex patterns that can potentially yield better informed predictions. Since it is quite difficult to consider several columns at once, or it would take a long time to consider all possible patterns in many different columns simultaneously, we'll use machine learning to automate this for us. So let's do our first machine learning uh, model for the Titanic uh, survival prediction and we'll uh, build uh, uh, what's known as a random forest model. This model is constructed of several trees. Uh, there are three trees in the picture below, but we'll construct 100 mm, trees that will individually consider each passenger's data and uh, what on whether the individual survived then the random forest model makes a democratic decision. The outcome with the most votes win. You can see the uh, trees and uh, how a random forest predicts on these trees. The code uh, cell below looks for patterns in four different columns. We would uh, take numeric columns, it's passenger class, sex, siblings and parts of the data. It constructs the trees in the random forest model based on uh, patterns in the train uh, CSV on our train dataset uh, file before generating predictions for the passengers in test CSV. The code also saves these new predictions in a, a CSV file, my submission that we could uh, later submit at kegel.com. Uh, so uh, let's look uh, the code. Uh, let's make a review. So from uh, Escalearn, we would import the model, uh, the random forest classifier. For the label, we'll take uh, the train data label, its uh, survived column. We'll take numeric features, its passenger class, sex, siblings, and parge. Uh, we would use pandas and get dummies for the train data set, and we'll do the same with the test data set. So our model is a random forest classifier that I was talking about would uh, take 100 trees and the uh, maximum death uh, would be 5 and uh, random state 1. We would uh, feed the model uh, on our uh, train data and see the score. So our score is 82%, uh, uh, that is uh, much greater than, uh, the, uh, than that we've got in a submission uh, file. Uh, with our hypothesis that all uh, that all uh, women are survived, so it's uh, really better. And we can, um, uh, with uh, this model, make a predictions for our test data set and uh, make our own submission that uh, we would call my submission CSV. So uh, as we uh, may uh, making a model predict. Uh, with the test data set, we can uh, make an output to CSV, to the my submission CSV. Make uh, sure that your notebook outputs the same message path that your submission was successful, su successfully saved before moving on. And once you're ready, click on the, uh, e the kaggle.com, you can click save version button in the top right corner of the notebook. And this will generate a pop-up window and ensure that the save and run all option is selected. This generate a window in the bottom left corner of the notebook. Uh, after it has finished running, click on the number to the right of the save version button. Click on the output tab on the right of the screen, then click on the submit to competition button to submit your results. So in this video, we see how easy we can do our first step in the Kaggle competition. Guys, please give me your feedback, push the like button, subscribe and give me your comment on my videos. Thank you. Bye.